Welcome to this service of Holy Eucharist, for which Sunday, what a joy it is to share with you today. For we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on the cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we wait the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. Come, Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the breath of life. Come, Holy Spirit. Our advocate, our counsellor. Come, Holy Spirit. Teacher of wisdom, reminder of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Granter of forgiveness, giver of peace. Come, Holy Spirit. May we feel God breathing through our worship. May we receive the Holy Spirit in this place, Amen. Amen. St. Luke's account in the Acts of the Apostles of that first Pentecost is full of high drama. It is presented to us as a spectacular event of supernatural intensity, characterised by violent wind and tongues as of fire, and by everyone 
going into an emotional overdrive. Suddenly, out of the blue, this high octane energy is unleashed upon the world, sweeping all before it. I invite you to read for yourselves this amazing narrative. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, Spirit of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. Let us take a moment in the quietness to ask God, the Holy Spirit, to illuminate in the areas of our life where we harbour sin. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, 
who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive you your sins, make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In response to God's forgiveness, we sing the Gloria in ex Jesus. God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Diane reads from the prophecy of Ezekiel. First reading, Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at the first verse. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley, it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, 
and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them then he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy mortal and say to the breath thus says the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live I prophesied to them prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and they stood on their feet a vast multitude then he said to me mortal these bones are the whole house of Israel they say our bones are dried up and our hope is utterly cut off we are lost this is the word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Before the Archbishop of York speaks to us, we share this new song, We Seek Thy Kingdom. Transform river. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you, so that when their hour comes, you will remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak on his own but will speak whatever he hears and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I say that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Pentecost isn't quite what we'd expect. The power and presence of Jesus is now available to everyone, everywhere. But let's be honest, if you were planning a worldwide mission and had this sort of power at your disposal, surely getting everyone to speak the same language would have been the best way forward, a much better tactic. It's almost certainly what we'd have done if we'd been left in charge. But the Holy Spirit does the opposite, not us speaking one language, but the Church of Jesus Christ speaking every language. God doesn't reverse the astonishing variety of human language and culture. God blesses it. We shouldn't really be surprised. You only need to glance out the window to see that God delights in variety. We human beings, each and every one of us, are made in God's image with all our differences. What Jesus has done in his dying and rising is to make that, each and every one of us, into a new community, the church, which is like a body made up of lots of different but equally important members. And it's the birthday of that church that we celebrate today with all our differences. By enabling us to speak about the Christian story in every language and every culture, the Holy Spirit not only affirms that all this variety is from God, but helps us understand and appreciate and serve the world in all its variety and difference. The church should reflect this diversity and help every person to hear the message of the gospel in their own language, in their own place. No one should be excluded. Thy Kingdom Come invites us to invite others to find their place and find their joy 
within God's church, invites us to go on translating the Christian message into the languages and cultures of the world and therefore reach out and go on reaching out and serving those who don't yet know Christ. We have something that every human heart needs, the goodness, the forgiveness that Jesus brings and the gift of the Spirit that binds us together. But those who are not yet members of the church, they have something we need. Because the church is a body where every part is valued and necessary, when some people are cut off or excluded, or where some don't even have an opportunity to hear the invitation of the gospel, or are driven away by our failings, the whole body suffers. But when other people are invited in, when we acknowledge that we have got things wrong, when we open ourselves to the goodness and mercy of God, the church is expanded, not just in size, but in beauty and variety. And we even learn more about the beauty of God. For the God we worship is the one God who is known in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, unity and diversity together. We're told in the scriptures that the coming of the Holy Spirit was like a rushing wind. Now, you can't actually see the wind, but you can certainly see its effects. So, with the Holy Spirit. We can't see it. But when we learn to love each other, and when we love God, and appreciate our differences, and when we live together in love, then God's Holy Spirit is at work. Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings to you all. Uh, my name is Archbishop Angelos of the Coptic Orthodox Church, and I'm here with you today because, like many of you, if not all of you, I believe that what we have in common is genuinely much, much greater than what separates us. We all believe in the empowering of the Holy Spirit, and we believe that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and empowered them as he empowers us today. So with that understanding, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, was buried, he descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, come around us, come within us, come to lead us, come to guide us, that we may work in your power and rest in your presence through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God forever. Amen. Holy Spirit, Giver of all good gifts, come into our darkness as light. Come as the wind to refresh us and uplift us. Come as joy to disperse our sorrows. Come as power to enable us and encourage us. Come as love and revive your church, that we may show and share your gifts that we may reach out in love 
through your grace. Come, Holy Spirit, direct our rulers, fill our leaders with talent and discernment. Inspire our leaders, artists, musicians, writers, and craftspeople. Come, the Spirit of God, give peace and unity to all nations. Especially at this time, we pray for peace between Israel and Palestine. Come, renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our homes, set our hearts on fire with the warmth of your love. Come, stir our minds and inspire us to do new things. Guide us in our relationships with each other and draw us together in your fellowship and joy. We come with all who are weary all whose hope has dried up. We come with the despairing, the despondent, and all who are dispirited with depressed and oppressed peoples. We pray for all who have become very sick or weak, for all who are infirm and cannot cope on their own, especially here we pray for Janet, Ellen, Janet, Roger and Mary, Janice, Betty, Nafat, Anne, Mark, Margaret, Fiona and Bob. We pray that as some of the lockdown restrictions are curtailed, that we all are sensible and don't take unnecessary risks so that we may all move forward to help eliminate the coronavirus. O oh, Spirit of God, stir up your power and come among us. Spirit of God, you breathe new life into us and give new life to your people. We bring before you all who have recently died. Give comfort to those who mourn and for all our loved ones departed. And at this time, we especially remember Richard Underwood and Peter Leveridge. Father, we pray for those we love but no longer see. Grant them your peace. Let your light perpetual shine upon them, and may they rest forever in your loving embrace. A prayer for COVID times. Ever-present loving God, be with us in our isolation. Be close to us in our distancing. Be healing in our sickness. Be joy in our sadness. Be light in our darkness. Be wisdom in our confusion. Be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar. That when doors reopen, we may, with the zeal of Pentecost, inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to our emerging world. For Jesus' sake, amen. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, June, for leading our intercessions. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us as a pledge of what was to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joys, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. On this day, we give you thanks, because in fulfilment of your promise, you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth, and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels, and with those in whom the Spirit dwells, to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, God of power and, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and of wine may be to us the body and blood of your Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ who on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Christopher, St. Andrew and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Archbishop Angelus leads us as we pray. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and was given so that the good news could be shared. And on that day, it was shared by a handful, but to multitudes, and they all received this wonderful good news in their own language. And so now, as we recite the prayer that our Lord himself has taught us, I encourage you to join me, but to recite it in the language of your choice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and for Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. with your people in these holy mysteries we pray you now to grant your gift of spiritual communion we trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love through jesus christ our lord amen alleluia christ our passover is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast alleluia we do not presume to come to this your table merciful lord Trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and open to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For 50 days, we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us as part of God's church. Here in Russia, St. Andrew and our online community, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim empowered by the Holy Spirit. Will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your heart beats with the longing of God, we will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's darkest places? We will. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Today, we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples, and we invite that same Spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created, breathe into you the life that he gives. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love and those who love you, wherever they may be. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ.